Hello and welcome to this video on GAMS involving the new GAMS Studio, the IDE GAMS gave to us in April 2018. And uh, in this video we will look at a simple first GAMS model that will deal with a little garage business, buying and selling vintage cars and trucks. The components we will cover in this course or mini course will be variables, equations, the GAMS model statement and also the song statement. We will also briefly touch modeling concepts such as scaling, bounds on variables, and the GAMS LST and GDX files. Let's have a look at the model first. The model will be a simple mixed integer linear programming model, and it will be, as I said, about buying and selling used or vintage cars and trucks. Let's consider we are running a backyard garage that rebuilds those, those vehicles. Buying those vehicles involves some cost. The cost to buy a wrecked car is $1,000. A wrecked truck, let's say, costs $1,200. The vehicles are kept and also restored in a barn, such as the one uh, pictured here. The barn has four spaces that can take vehicles. Two spaces are large spaces that can take either a truck or a car, and two of those spaces are small ones that can take cars only. When we buy the wrecked vehicles, we have our spending budget, which, which we will need to keep. And the spending budget we have is, say, $3,600. And after we bought these cars, we are fixing them up using non-modeled existing spare parts and own labor and sell the vehicles on the market. And the market price for vintage cars uh, will assume to be $2,000 and vintage trucks we will assume that they sell for $2,500. And the obvious goal in our little optimization problem is well, to answer the question, how many wrecked cars and trucks shall we buy to maximize the revenue? So let's see how all this text converts into an optimization model. In the next slide, we will look at variables and uh, yeah, the mathematical formulation. Let's say we have x1 denoting the number of cars and x2 denoting the number of trucks. Obviously, x1 and x2, the number of cars and trucks, will be non-negative. Translating into variable bounds, x1 and x2 need to be greater than or equal to zero. Both of them can only take integral numbers. Obviously, we can't buy or sell fractions of a car or a truck. So x1 and x2 will be whole numbers which are non-negative, as listed here. The objective function is, well, to maximize revenue, we call the revenue z. So the equation modeling the, the objective function will be z equals 2 times x1 plus 2.5 times x2. Note that we did not use $2,000 or $2,500 for the revenue for cars and trucks, and rather we used the unit kilodollars. So in everything is written in units of $1,000. So 2 times x1 means, well, $2,000 for x1 and so on. And the reason for that is that whenever you do numerical calculations, it's advantageous to use numbers that are in the same order of magnitude. It's just numerically more stable. You minimize rounding errors, truncation errors, and so on. And that's like our, our take on scaling and our, our little model here. And apart from the object, objective function, we have more equations which model our constraints. And the constraints are well our budget. Spending budget was $3,600, and that's an upper limit of whatever money we spend. And the money we spend is given by well, $1,000 times the number of cars x1 plus $1.2,000 times the number of trucks x2 we buy. So the budget constraint reads x1 plus 1.2 x2 less than or equal to 3.6. That's our budget constraint. And then we also have the storage constraint. The barn has four spaces. Two of them can take trucks and all four of them can take cars. So the limit on cars is, well, the, car, the number of cars we, can, we store are at most four less however many trucks we have, translating into x1 is less than or equal four less um, x2. And finally, the number of trucks x2 can be at most two because there are only two large spaces. And that's the mathematical formulation. And let's jump now into the GAM Studio and let's see how this very model looks like in GAM's code. 
So what we're looking at here is the GAMS Studio, the GAMS Integrated Development Environment. That's not only available for Windows, but also for other platforms. And in this particular example, we are working on a Mac. The GAMS code starts with a title statement and a couple of comment lines. And uh, the actual code starts with declaring the variables of our model. We do have integer variables for the number of cars and trucks, x1 and x2. And we have a free variable z, denoting the total revenue, which we will use for capturing the value of the objective function. Then the model goes on with declaring the equations, which are the objective function, eq underscore revenue, and the two constraints, the budget constraints, and the constraint on the number of cars and trucks in the bar. The equations are first declared, and then they are defined in the following three lines with the dot dot syntax. The revenue equation z equals 2 times x1 plus 2.5 times x2. The budget equation x1 plus 1.2 times x2 is less than or equal to 3.6. And the cars in barn constraint x1 is less than or equal to 4 minus x2, the number of trucks. Note that the number of trucks is limited by an upper limit of 2, and we do not formulate this as an equation, but we directly set the up attribute of a variable, which sets a bound. This is the code line x2.up equals 2, which is way more efficient than formulating this as a constraint, because it just limits the number of constraints in the optimization model. And it turns out that whenever you can set upper or lower bounds on variables, that's preferable to formulating the same functionality as a equation. Actually, it's not the same functionality because it's a different model, which is just more efficient. That's That gets generated. After the bound, we, we have the model statement that tells the GAMS system that all the equations defined above should go into a model called vintage. And subsequently, in the solve statement, the vintage model is solved as a mixed integer linear program. That's the using MIP part of the statement. And then we define also the uh, yeah, the variable capturing the value of the objective function after the keyword maximizing. So we say solve vintage using MIP maximizing Z. And at the end, we display solution values of the variables, which will go into the LST or the list file, which is part of the standard GAMS output files after we execute the model. So let's go ahead and execute the model. We do this by selecting the GAMS menu and we say run with GDX creation, which will not only generate the LST file and the log file, but also generate a GDX a GAMS data exchange file with structured information on the variables, equations, and so on, all the components in the model. So let's run this. After we run it, the log file pops up at the bottom of the screen, which gives us information about the GAMS run itself. Let's Let's see what's in this in this log file. If we scroll up all the way to the top, we get some diagnostic information about the GAMS version. We get information about the license. In our case, it's the free demo version, so that you can like duplicate this example without having to pay for a license because the model is so small. We get some information on the model size: three rows, three columns. Rows are the equations, and columns are the are the variables. We have two discrete columns, which are the two discrete variables x1 and x2 for the number of cars and trucks. We get some diagnostic output of the solver itself. We also see that we use the CPLEX solver, which is the default for mixed integer linear programs. And scrolling further down, we get information on the, on the solution itself. Here we see that the BIP solution is a proven optimal solution. The solution value is 7. And that's exactly the revenue we will get, $7,000. At the bottom, we get information on the GDX file that's, that got um, created with the path, that's the green line. And below that, in the blue line, we get a status normal completion. That's what we expect from a model. If we double-click that, we open the LST file in the editor. The LST file is a text file, but in addition, it does have some, some sectioning to it. We see on the, on the middle part of the screen, the sections, let's say compilation, equation listing, and so on. And on the right part of the screen, we see the actual output, 
which goes into the LST file, and we also see that it has the 198 lines with content. If we scroll all the way up in the LST file, or just double-click the section on the left side, we get to the top. The first part is the compilation, which just echoes the content of the GUMS, GUMS model. Compilation happens without error. We don't see any, any special things there. It continues with the equation listing. It collects all the equations as they are defined in the model and lists them. Individual equations, are, there are three of them. There's the revenue, which is the objective function, which reads like this. There's the budget constraint and the equation cars in barn constraint, which read like that. The next part in the LST file is the so-called column listing that lists the variables as they are declared and defined in the GAMS model, x1 being the number of cars, x2 being the number of trucks. We also see that there are special attributes to this, these variables, like the .lo, .l, and .up attribute. And the number of trucks has an .up attribute with a value of 2. That's exactly the upper bound which we have set before in the, in the GAMS model. And finally, but which is also a variable, is the value of the objective function. That's the z variable. And we see that it's an unbound variable. It doesn't have an upper or lower bound. That's a requirement for the variable that captures the value of the objective function. We go on with some model statistic. GAMS returns things like blocks of equations, how many single equations do we have, how many variables we have. In our very small model, it's just three equations and three variables cars, trucks, and the value of the objective function. The value of non-zero elements is just the number of coefficients in the, in the equations that are non-zero. We also see that we do have two discrete variables, which are the number of cars and trucks. The solution report displays information after CPLEX as our solver has returned. It lists the type of solver we used, which is CPLEX. We get a solver status message, one for normal completion, Model status, one for optimal, that's what we expect for a very small mixed integer linear programming model, and also the value of the objective function. We can also see that the resource usage was very quick on this particular machine. And then continues again, after stating the solution values, with the equation and variable sections, now after solving the model, so it reflects basically the values of the left-hand side of the equations and the values of the variables and the attributes after solving. We see that the budget and cars in barn equations do have a certain level value, which is not at the limit. That's why there are no marginal costs to them. The solution variables x1 and x2 have certain level values. They also have marginal values, and the marginal values basically tell us how much the solution would improve. In our maximization case, they would uh, that this would uh, correspond to a increased revenue, and it's two thousand dollars for the cars and two thousand two point five thousand dollars for the number of trucks. And finally, we get the output of actual display statements we put in the model, and what we displayed is the level values of the variables x one and x two, and also of the objective function, and this is the output as we expect: one car, two trucks, and seven thousand dollars in revenue. And finally, if you click on the green line in the log file, that opens up the GDX file. The GDX file has all the, so to say, database, which is uh, part of the model after solving, and provides a structured view on the different data elements. We do not have sets here, but we do have equations and variables. And if we just look at the values of them, we see according values to the values in the LST file and especially when we have very large data, uh, data sets and very many data, that's probably more convenient to look at. And GDX files are also used for interfacing GAMS with other pieces of software, just as, for instance, Microsoft Excel. And this concludes our coverage of the very simple vintage car model. And now we'd like to jump back to the last slide. Thank you for watching this movie. Please stop by at our sites on the internet for more information or shoot us an email with your inquiries. Also below, drop us a note on what you liked about this video and what you would like to see in the future.
I'm Thomas Meindl. Thanks, and see you again.